<laughs> okay, that's going to be the scene when you open up, yeah. you know. <laughs> so between falling trees, power outages, and egg-bound chickens. It's just another day on the homestead. Another day at the Yostead. Okay. Our hands are always full. Hi there, folks. I'm Sean the Modern Yeoman, and I'd like to wish you a happy new year. I'd also like to thank the good Lord above that this tree that fell down behind me didn't cause any damage to humans or infrastructure. So when I woke up this morning, walked outside, I noticed that half of this tree has fallen over. Now, this tree, we've known about it being in poor shape for a while, but we didn't realize it was in this poor of shape, that it was ready to just fall over. Thankfully, when it fell, it didn't fall on anybody standing around, number one, and didn't fall on our propane tank. It just fell here on the lawn, on the grass. What I would like to do at this point is probably cut down the rest of the tree, because the rest of the tree, I'm thinking, is dead as well. And it's just a danger sitting there. So I think I'm gonna enlist the help of my dad get this thing down. So you moved the dead limbs, the dead branches, the dead half of the tree. Right. And they were pretty light, apparently, yeah. just because of how dead they just are. Just rotted out, for sure. Yeah, look, woodpecker hole. Try. So what do you think we should do here? Um, what direction should we put drop this guy? Probably in this direction, right? Right, and it, it looks as though there's there's kind of a natural lean to it uh, in that direction, kind of heading towards the west, yeah. sort of. Uh, so that might be the way to go. Another option would be to cut this limb off first. This one right here? Yeah, because it definitely has obviously a lean, and that would that would fall and tip pretty, uh, you know, pretty much where we want it to. Um, I don't know, dealer's choice. Do you <laughs> which direction you want to go in? If you why don't we try cutting this guy first, right. and so, then we'll take we'll take care of the rest after we get because this will be the toughest part. Yeah, give it a good notch here, and yeah, to come in from all right, here. all right. Uh, Clear this stuff out of the way, obviously. Um, then a good cut, like right, right in here. Here we go. Well, there we go. Timber. Don't know what this tree is, but it's got a really strange red ring on the inside of it. It's kind of odd.
Okay, so unfortunately it didn't make it on film, but we got the second, the second branch, the second limb knocked down, as you can see here, and it just missed the propane tank. Dad actually had the rope on it, and so you had to pull pretty hard to get it away. I did, yeah. It, it, it was a good thing that we did have this rope secured to it. Yeah. Uh, I had to pull much further in that direction because the, I, I guess just the, the natural lean really wanted to take it toward the yeah. propane tank. So I had to yank pretty Look hard. Look how close that is. But, but it missed it, so. It missed it. So awesome. I think the toughest work is done. I'm going to cut this thing down now, which should be a piece of cake. Won't be, won't be hard at all. Yeah, because you can see where that angle is, is off just a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's going to be the scene when you open up, yeah. you know. <laughs> Timber. Woo. Feels good. Feels really good. Now I got to clean up. All right, so interesting turn of events. As I was cleaning up, the wind got so bad that apparently there was a power outage. I walked in side to get a drink and I realized that none of the lights were on. So I just checked on the power outage map online and apparently it just happened. So I haven't had any updates, but it changes my focus because now I'm not gonna focus on the stuff in the yard. I mean, I will take care of that, but now I need to make sure my generator's up and running. So I'm gonna change, like I said, I'm gonna change gears and check on my generator because we don't know how long this will last and I wanna make sure my freezer is plugged in because that's filled with meat. I'm gonna keep it closed, gonna keep the fridge closed and cross my fingers that the lights turn back on soon. All right, so generator seems to be working just fine. I don't really have any gas in it. I just have a very tiny amount of gas in it. So let's see if I do have, yeah, that's filled up. So this is 100% gas. So that's filled up. That'll last us a while. So I'm, not, I'm gonna give myself two hours or so, three hours. And if the lights haven't come back on by that point, I'm gonna power up the generator plug in some stuff that needs to be plugged in. Okay, so good update. The power is back on. I don't know if you can see it in there. The power is back on and it just turned back on and it's just in time too because it started raining. And when it starts raining, there'll be water that goes into our crawl space. And those of you, those of you guys that have watched this channel for a while 
know that we have flooding issues in our crawl space and then we have a sump pump to deal with that and so i would have to start the generator and get that sump pump running which isn't that big of a deal but still the timing is good so the power is back on i'm going to keep my fingers crossed that it stays on all right so as if this day wasn't wild enough we just found one of our chickens has a stuck egg his egg bound as they say so we are going to try and treat her the best we can and cross our fingers that our treatment works. First thing we did was give her a little bath here with some warm water to try and kind of ease her muscles down there. So now we're gonna go check to see in here how she's doing. If they're closing their eyes, that might be one symptom of uh, being egg bound. Okay, so her well, closing her about, eyes. But the thing about it is I'm holding her belly and just holding her tight and singing. And okay, well, so you can feel the egg, right, Mom? I'm pretty sure. Okay, so what I'm going to do, what do you want to yeah. hold that? First thing I'm going to do is give her some Vet Rx. This is just it's a handy good. thing to have yeah. for chickens. So I'm going to put this down her throat. She's so comfortable. Oh, <laughs> no, honey, you're okay. Everything's All right, okay. There we go. All right, open your beak and then Grammy will hold you again. Okay. Okay, that woke her right up. <laughs> so I gave her one of those, a shot of that. And then now, Dad, you got some Tums mixed in. Yeah. You read that. Uh, the calcium. Uh, the calcium that's in uh, these Tums mm -hmm. will induce contractions. Okay. Let's so, give it a shot. Kind of a kind of a pitocin for chicken. They're supposed okay. to. They're suppo wait, no, they're supposed to peck at it themselves. Well, well, we'll leave some in there for her, yeah. but we okay. will need to get some down her gullet. Okay, that's good. Can I hold her? <laughs> you no, have she's held her. comfortable. Look at she her. She will be very comfortable in here. So now we need to let we need to cross her fingers that the between the RX and the thumbs that'll do its thing. In my holding her. Let's get that egg out, girl. You're okay, honey. I should probably no, get her I mean, some other water. Than the, the warm bath. Uh, I said you can keep her in a warm bath for upwards of 30 minutes. Okay. Um, but that's. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get some water for her, and we're going to cross her fingers that she makes it. Um, I'll leave this here. Cool. Thank you. So between falling trees, <laughs> power outages. Egg-bound chickens. This is another day on the homestead. Another day at the Yostead. <laughs> Our hands are always full, and I'm very thankful that I got my dad here. Happy to help. As always, happy to help. Um, he's just as much of a homesteader as Holly and I are. So, um, thanks for hanging out with us on this action-packed day. And until we see you guys next time, remember, as always, slowly, slowly. slowly.